direct from Las Vegas, it's the Sandy Castell and Friends Variety Show. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Sandy Castell and Friends Variety Show with Chef Michael. Sit back, relax, and we're going to entertain you with a little bit of cooking with Chef Michael and, of course, some wonderful interviews and entertainment. See you in a minute. I'm here with Rich Natoli. Hi, Rich. How are you? Hi, Sandy. How are you? Good, good. good. You. Now, you are now the new man of a thousand voices. Is that, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's what they say. Here, I brought you one of my hats, actually. Oh. One of my hats. Voices of a Generation. Of a Generation. Oh, I yes, like that. Yes, that's the title like of my that. show. Though, Let's put that right there. We'll prop that oh, up. Thanks. We can get that Look to stay that. right yeah. there. Is that in the view? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, you started yeah. out in uh, Northern California, which I is um, where I'm from, San Francisco area. Are you from the Bay Area? Yes, I yeah. am. I, I grew am. up in uh, Redwood City. Yeah, that's pretty up there. Yeah, it is. A lot of Redwoods. A lot of Redwoods. And, you know, a lot of towns. Talent came out of the Bay Area there. I mean, you had people like Chris Christopherson came out of there, Merv Griffin. I mean, a lot of a lot of celebrities did come out of the Bay Area. Yeah, and some of them who relocated to Las Vegas too, right. just they like Merv up, Griffin. They end up in Vegas. What's I up? I know. Everybody <laughs> wants to come to Las Vegas. Like Wayne yeah. Newton would say, they all end up with the king of Las Vegas, Wayne Newton. <laughs> well, you know, you started out in Northern California, yeah. and you got the bug, right? But you said your mm -hmm. high school your high school teacher told you something. High school ga the guidance kinda. counselor. <laughs> Told me, well, I took it, you know, in high school, you'd take a, a like a job, it was called a job o mm -hmm. to see where your interests lie, right? So I took this test and it showed a lot of create, creativity. Right. Know? And so the counselor called me and he said, I see you're tested with a very creative score. Perhaps you'd like to be a barber. A barber? I, I, and I said, no, I was thinking, of, I said, no, I was thinking of like entertainment because, you know, I'm, I'm interested in that. And he goes, no, no, you don't want to do that. You better he have goes, a backup plan. He goes, you, don't want, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, it's funny because it reminded me of a story Robin Williams used to, used to say when he said to his dad, I want to go into acting. And he said, you need something to fall back on like welding. Welding? <laughs> like, what? You know? <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny, but people don't really understand. I mean, yeah. and you know, the audience out there, they don't really know what it's like to be an artist if they're a regular, you know, person that does like accounting yeah. or business or something yeah. like that. Because for us as artists, we have this passion inside of us. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah. you know, I mean, when I went to college, you know, the first thing that they said in our acting class, uh, the professor, uh, Dr. Crawford, he said, if you can do anything else, do it. Right. Right. And half the people looked at each other and we said, what, what, what are you talking about? He said, because you're going to be told you're too short, you're too fat, you're too tall, you're too, br you're a brunette, you're, a br you're never going to fit the bill except for those few rare times, you know, that hopefully yeah. you might get the opportunity to do. So you're going to get all this negative, you know, this yeah. negative stuff before you ever get the yeses. And you have to really have a thick skin right. and be confident about who you are and, yeah. and not give up, you know, and continue yeah. to pursue your dreams. So I'm sure for you, wh what did you do when the counselor you know, told you, you that? Know, well, I didn't. Listen. I walked out and I ripped up the paper and I thought, <laughs> well, he's a counselor. What does he know? <laughs> I mean, gosh, I, a But barber? you know what's interesting is that, is that in, I remember in acting school when they would, when the teacher would, would criticize certain uh, kids that were acting because they were, they, you know, one of them maybe had a lisp or, or, or a girl, they had a little quirkiness about them. Right. And I said, well, quirkinesses and originality is what made, I mean, John Wayne went like that, That's Pilgrim. Right. Uh, Jimmy Stewart, you know, you know, couldn't even get a sentence out. <laughs> he became a movie star, Sandy. And so... Uh, that's what made them special. And I yeah. never understood why they were saying, be like everybody else. The ones that weren't like everybody else became the big stars. It's right? funny. It's funny. You know, they talk so much about trying to emulate other artists or mm -hmm. other uh, actors, other singers, yeah. other performers. But the, like, just like what you said, the uniqueness of each one of us is yeah. what makes us special. And yeah. when you're too generic... Yeah, you know, then that's right. you have a harder time. I See, think. I just want to say your name like John Travolta in Greece. Sandy, come on, Sandy. <laughs> let's go. Let's go down to the beach, Sandy. <laughs> you um, gonna sing for me too? <laughs> <laughs> you better shape up. <laughs> so the thing is, um, yeah, and I, and I and I I just think that you just have to be who you are. Yeah, be who you are. Well, I, I think that's real important. Now, you started out, so then you went to the Circle Star Theater in St. Carlos. I worked as a ticket person yeah. there, and everybody who's anybody played this place. It, and this was the lowest paying job that I ever had in my life, but the most 
educational because I got to see everyone, Sinatra, Don Rickles, everybody you can think of in the entertainment mm -hmm. world played this theater at some point. And I would get to, to watch all their shows. And, and so that was, that was really a, a turning point for me because <coughs> I had just started performing. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I remember saying to, uh, to the, the, the boss there one time, watching a, 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 a comedian, can't remember who it was now, and I said, well, gee, isn't that interesting that the audience laughed at this one bit, and then the mm -hmm. second show, the audience didn't really laugh at it. Isn't that and funny? He, he turned to me and said, that's showbiz, kid. <laughs> and I, I had not been performing yet. That's and I right. said, I didn't understand that. But then when I started performing, I went, ah, that's what he, that's what he meant. <laughs> that's you know, showbiz. Every audience is different, <laughs> yes. So we're going to be right, right back after a quick message. You know what Benjamin Franklin said? What? Anybody who represents themselves as a fool. This guy, his name is Neil Caminaris. He is one of the best civil attorneys in Las Vegas. Do you know what he specializes in? Asset protection, estate planning, business law, bankruptcy, foreclosure, immigration. That's what I love about this guy. Neil Calmineras. He's the best. We're back with Rich Natoli. Now, Rich, you were telling us a little bit about how when you were at the Circle Theater, you were able to um, watch all of these great performers and sit in the wings and watch and learn from them. Yeah. So after that, you decided to make a move, right? Yeah. Then I, I st well, I actually started performing in, I was in high school. I was still in oh. high school at this time. So I started performing in the school shows there and actually uh, just thought, wow, you know, it was really well received. Surprisingly to me, it was one of those things that I, I had to try. I don't know why. But you weren't sure if anybody would like it. I was terrified. <laughs> I didn't know if anyone would like it. My friends all said, oh, you do really good voices. You got to perform in the show. They wanted to get out of class. So it was like a senior assembly kind of thing. So you're not really so sure how. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. But I, I did it. And then I went, wow, this is really cool. And right after that, I thought, geez, I got to, you know, I got to do more of this. And then so I went to college and I performed there. And then I started doing the clubs. Uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. And that's where I started. And then from San Francisco, you came Los to Los Angeles. Angeles. Yeah, and then Los Angeles, I started working, you know, the Comedy Store, the Improv, and these kind of clubs, and then went on the road and worked with everyone who's anyone in comedy. I mean, Jay Leno and Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Jay Leno and Jerry Seinfeld. And they were all these people, you know, uh, on the road. And now how did they respond like when you met them and you uh, did you do them back to them? Oh, I've done yeah. I did Jay Leno for Jay Leno and uh, you know, he he not, he's one of these guys that doesn't really like impressions of him. You well, know? you can't stick your chin out far enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm not big enough to do Jay. Yeah. But uh, no, and they, no, they're all very nice and, and I always worked clean, so they like to clean act on in front of them. That's good. So a yeah. lot of the headliners in those clubs at that time used to request me because mm -hmm. I, I worked real clean, and, and I did something. I did the impressions, which they didn't do, so it was different. And oh, that's it, it balanced good. out a, like a, a show. That's good. And then you played, what, about 42 different clubs? Oh, I played, I, I did comedy in almost every state yeah. in the country, you know. And, you know, a lot, I know a lot of uh, comedians or impressionists, they, uh, or yeah. whatever. I know Robin Williams used to, no, Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. Jerry Seinfeld said that he would go to a little place yeah. down in, Florida to work somewhere out to like work out his yeah. jokes, new material. Yeah, we did he that, said yeah. he would try it out on these uh, in the audiences to mm -hmm. see what would work. Do you do the same thing? Absolutely. Yeah. We, we would go to the showcase clubs and try out those things. I, mean, I don't do that anymore in those places. Yeah. Now I just kind of try it out in the paid gigs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place <laughs> to did, try it out. <laughs> but, I did, but, but at that time we would do, yeah, you'd work out, a, if you're doing a TV uh, set, like I did all the com stand-up comedy shows on A&E and MTV mm -hmm. and, and uh, VH1, those things. And so we could see you on those? Well, I guess you can find them online. I, mean, I, did, I did comedy on the roads, uh, two of those with John Biner. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did one in Vegas, actually, the Tropicana. We did one in San Diego. I did with him, who was who a great, a great, talented comedian, John Biner. But um, uh, we would work out the set in a club and mm -hmm. then do it. You know. So now, what was your most interesting experience that you've had on the road? Oh, I... Uh, As, you know, when you're traveling. There's been, like just so many I, mean, I wouldn't even know where to start I've I've had I mean there's been I've seen uh, well there was a guy in Kansas City one time wanted to kill me because he was a heckler kill you he was on drugs yeah. he was a heckler 
and it was a snowy night in Kansas City in February, <sighs> and this guy was yelling out stuff, so I would do, we would do heckle lines mm -hmm. on him, right? And the crowd would laugh, and the guy was getting angrier and angrier. Oh. And he charged the stage, and the security threw him out. And oh my god! So we've had everything happen to us That's as wild. comedians on the road. That's wild. You know, and shows just crazy things. Do you do you ever work with up and coming young comedians and give them advice? I all the time, and I, I you know I invite people like that on the radio show and mm -hmm. and and. Uh, and stuff and and but but a lot of a lot of the young guys that will say what advice do you have if i want to work professionally as a comedian i would say to them and this is just my opinion from my experience work as clean as you can and then they would say well why i'm not I, i'm not hip and cool if i do that and i say no the reason is is because if you don't you're going to work two little venues right if you do you can work all anywhere. the venues That's so right. why eliminate all these wonderful places that you can work because you want to throw in some curse words. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I noticed we've got a DVD of you here, and yeah. this is for our audience. Mm -hmm. So if anyone would like to win, get this uh, DVD. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, I sh we shot that live at the uh, Harmon Theater, which is no longer doing, no longer a performance place. The Harmon Theater was where I had my show mm -hmm. uh, several years back, um, and I performed there for several months. And then we, we shot that in there at the Harmon Theater. So live. if, if somebody wants live. to win this, they can uh, write into the station, and uh, we'll give you the information uh, a little bit later. And you can get this Rich Natoli common, Comic Impressionist presents Voices of a Generation. Rich, is there anything else you'd like to say to our audience? I'd like to say just come come see the show or go to richnatoli.com and you can watch clips on there. That's my website. richnatoli.com and you mm -hmm. also are on Facebook, I'm sure. Um, fa well, Facebook, Facebook's, uh, yeah, in and out of Facebook, but, but in and uh, out? LinkedIn. Why? Well, I was on there. I was on there and then I did uh, some national <laughs> things and I had a a lot of kind of strange things happening, so ah. I, I took down my page on there, but, <laughs> but I'll, be, I'll probably be back up on there. That someday. story later. Yes, that story <laughs> later. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. And Twitter. All right. Yeah. So, oh, so people can follow you on Twitter. At, at Rich Natoli with an E. Do you give e jokes or something like that on Twitter? Or no, you know, I, joke just, of the day. I just Twitter about what, what we're doing, uh -huh. you know, where we're, where, what we're playing and different, different shows and different radio guests and things like that. Okay. Well, check out Rich Natoli online at richnatoli.com. Mm -hmm. And we'll see more of you yes, because we have a clip that we're going to share with everybody. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you, Sandy. Thank you so much, Rich. Yep. Okay. <laughs> W-I-M-A. What does that mean, Sandy? Women and men in music and arts. WIMA. Empowering artists of all ages through education, mentoring, and scholarships. What a great feeling to give these scholarships to these people that need it. I know, and you can go to WIMAfoundation.org, become a member, or make a donation. You got to see Rich's show, The Voices of a Generation. <laughs> Take my word for it. It's funny. <laughs> He's a dear friend. He is an incredible talent, and you are about to be entertained, ladies and gentlemen, by greatness. Here is Mr. Rich Natoli. And I always wondered what it would be like if you had like every president from John F. Kennedy all the way up to Barack Obama each doing a verse of the national anthem. <laughs> Oh, law say, can you see by the dawn's early light in what so proudly we hail? A hose ball strikes up right straight. Throw the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. <laughs> and the rockets were glare. The bombs bursted in air. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave? Or the land of the free? And the home of the brave. God bless America. Look, let's. Let's, let's be clear. Let's be clear. Last week, the Supreme Court announced they would not be putting a live nativity scene in Washington, D.C. This was not for religious purposes. 
They just couldn't find three wise men and a virgin. <laughs> now, Miss W behind the podium, I appreciate your service to our country. I, I'm excited to be continuing to travel on your dollars. That's right, next week I'll be going to Israel. I'm excited about going to Israel because I've never been to South America. <laughs> Boys, I'm Miss Bill Clinton, you know, I hate the media, I hate the media. The media said way back when, when I left office, that I would not have a job. But all these years, I've been the spokesperson for Motel 6. <laughs> I love the former presidents. One of the ones I miss the most is Reagan, because everything about Reagan was funny. The way he moved, the way he talked, it was funny. <laughs> Well, there I go again. You know, people said to me, Ron, you, you had an incredible career. Why, you were a sportscaster and an actor and a governor and the president for eight years. Did you ever have any odd jobs? <laughs> well, yes, I was a house painter one time for five years. Five years. I didn't think I'd ever finish that house. <laughs> And now, in the new century, we have women astronauts blasting off into space. Doesn't this deserve applause, women astronauts? Yes. I think this is great for the country. You know why? This way, if the crew ever gets lost up there in space, at least a woman will have the sense to ask for directions. <laughs> Hey, Sandy, do you know something? The Tuscany Grill in Henderson, their meatballs are phenomenal. So is their cheesecake. Haha, <laughs> so is their veal parmesan. And their lasagna. And their spaghetti mugliarese. Oh my gosh, everything is great. Let's go. I'm starving. We're going right now. Let's go eat some dinner. I'm so hungry. Hi, I'm here with Chef Michael and Chef D of Soul Delicious Spices. <laughs> and Soul Nutritious. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and what are we doing here today, boys? Well, we're going to make some special stuff here. Chef Mike, what we have here today, we have some fish I see soaking here in the milk. You're wondering why it's soaking in the milk? <laughs> yes, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because a lot of people, anytime you have a uh, salt water fish, the best thing to take that smell out of the fish is milk. So Chef Tia, tell what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to take that fish over to the sink, rinse them, and put them in that pan. Ah. I would do that. That's what I'm talking about. Now Chef D is uh, preparing this and getting things ready. Uh, as you can see, we have some other stuff. So we're gonna do a special filet of sole. Now this fish can be bought at Smith's. It's $1.99 a piece. It's a very inexpensive fish, but the flavor, no. Mm -hmm. Absolutely out of this world. One of my favorite fishes. Yes. And uh, again, like I mentioned, if you put it in milk, the milk takes the smell out of the fish and it doesn't give it that sea taste. Because many times people could cook fish and you go in your house and go, oh my God, who's cooking fish? But this is delicious. Chef yeah, Mike cooked the fish, that's why I smell it. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> and as you can see, there's four beautiful pieces of uh, sole that is here. Well, no, it's five. We got five? five? We got yes. five pieces, okay. Chef Michael, yes. is, is sole a saltwater fish or a freshwater fish? It's a saltwater fish. Is that why you put it in the milk? Yes, anytime sea bass, flounder, any kind of that. Now, you don't have to do it with like um, orange ruffy because that's a white fish. But even I, even with orange ruffy, I still always soak all my milk. Or soak all my milk. I soak all my fish <laughs> in milk. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Now, everybody knows that the uh, spices that I use are salt, pepper, parsley, garlic. But today, we're gonna do something special because Chef D has got some absolutely phenomenal seasonings that you can buy at Smart and Final, and he's gonna season this fish. I'm gonna show you mm. how simple this is. Chef D, what's the first thing you're gonna do? Well, what we're gonna do is we have this blackened season that we're gonna use for the fish right here. So this blackened season right here, we're gonna use for the fish. We're gonna season up this portion of the fish. Boy, that looks pretty good there. Oh, it's excellent once you try it. Okay. You just want to rub it real nice and gentle. Oh, yeah. Then you want to turn it over. You don't want a one-sided fish with one flavor. You want to have both sides with great, so delicious taste. Okay, we got that there. 
Gonna rub this one in. Now we're gonna get ready to hit it with the all-purpose rub. Now the all-purpose rub, what kind of spices are in that one? Well, this has eight ingredients. It has like a lemon, great lemon uh, texture to it. Like I said, it's low sodium, great for diabetics and people with high blood pressure. This would be a great season for you to use as well for your fish. What I'm gonna to do is about show you right now how we season this fish. I'm gonna put some on this portion here. I just wanna show you that you can use all these seasonings, not just for the blacking for your fish. You can also use the rub for one fish. You can also use the vegetable seasoning as well. Now, you know, we have a segment called Staying Fit and Fabulous for Every Day. Mm -hmm. And I know that fish is really good for people, you know, to eat a lot more fish and chicken and, yes. you know, instead of uh, heavier foods and a lot of starches and stuff. So uh, with your seasonings, uh, then you would give them an opportunity to have a lot more fish, right? There it yeah. is. Yes. Because a lot of people don't like the taste of fish. And this is the vegetable seasoning. You can also use this vegetable seasoning, not just for vegetable, but you can also use it for your fish. Mm. I'm just trying to give you... An example of how these dishes can be made with all our different products here. Well, that sounds good there. Okay, uh -huh. and that is right here is the vegetable seasoning. One of my first products I came out with. Now, if you notice, everybody, this uh, particular fish is almost on the lines of like a halibut. It's kind of thick. It's kind yes, of thick, it but, it, I, but it is very, very absolutely moist and delicious. And I'm going to show you a little trick. As soon as Chef D's done rubbing down this fish, I'm gonna show you a little trick that uh, I do to keep that fish always tender, and but most of all, always moist. And I'm very excited, and you know why? Why? Because it gives me a chance to go to Smith's on Sahara and Durango. They got the best of everything, Sandy. You know what they have over there? What? The best food, the best produce, the best meats. I love that place, and I can't wait to go. I know, we love shopping at Smith's. I'm going right now. So I was wondering, Dee, yeah. um, how did you come up with your first, you said the vegetable seasoning yes, was your first one. my first one. Well, basically, as being the chef, you know, a lot of people wanted me to be there at a particular time when they come in, oh, is Chef D there? And once they found I wasn't there, they wouldn't come back until it was oh, my day to work. Oh. So what I did is I had some sous chefs. What I did, I said, oh, we're gonna mix this for you. So when you wanna do something as far as gr grilling or blacking, use this blacking seasoning. Want to use your ribs or some steaks? Use this here. And for the vegetable seasoning, I said, where if you want to do your vegetables, as far as your cabbage and your collard greens, this is the one that you use. So I pre-mixed them, and as they was cooking it, it's just like I was there. So we can mm. all be like a chef. There you go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking nice about. Nice and simple, like Chef Mike said. We don't like to keep it complicated. That's we like right. to keep it nice and simple. That's now, right. Now what I'm about to do is I'm about to add this all-purpose rub and the blackened seasoning to one of these particular fishes because it gives it that nice little offset with the Cajun flair and the good, you know, lemon pepper flavor. Boy, that sounds real good. Look at that. Look how nice that looks. Is there a certain way you rub and it there? And it's uh, real concentrated, Mike, so you yeah. don't have to use as much. Is there a certain all. rub that you do there? Like, is it like <laughs> this, the moonwalk or what? The thing is a little soul to it. It's like, a little yeah, like, chicka, 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 you know? <laughs> and now I'm going to add a little bit of the Cajun flair to it. All right. That's looking good. And then we're going to flip it over. Right. You could get really creative with this. Yes, you can. Yeah. The oven is at 450 degrees. Okay. That's how hot the oven is on this. Now you put the tomatoes standing on top of that. Okay. And the reason, ladies and gentlemen, we put the tomatoes on top of that is because when it cooks, it does not dry out the fish. The juices from the lemon yeah. and the yes. tomatoes sink Citrus. down into the fish, but when you bite into it, absolutely fabulous. Mm -mm. And then a, a little of what you call a garnish here. As you can see, now remember, I'm not using no garlic, okay. no salt, no black pepper. Everything is encompassed in Chef D's product. These are the ones here that you can find in Sport and Fall, like he just um, told you, Chef Mike. These yeah. Ones you can find. And I shop there all the time, and believe it or not, besides some Smith's. Fresh parsley, too. Fresh parsley. Well, what's funny, Chef D, is that um, when you came on the radio show before mm -hmm. and you brought in your spices, he said, I get those spices. Over at, over at Smart and Final. Yeah, because I shop there all the time, believe it or not. Besides, because they got the big the big tank cans, different yeah. stuff that the restaurants usually so use. So which one you go to, Mike? Uh, the closest one to you? Well, right Smart across from Smith's on Sahara and Durango. And say it again, where? Smith's in Sahara and Durango. Yeah, we too. love you, right. Smith's. We love you, baby. <laughs> yes, we do. That looks great. Now, there as you can is. see, look at the beautiful oh my look. Gosh. Now, Sandy, if you'd be so kind to put that in that oven, 
Yes. All right. And let's tell how long would that take, Mike? Well, you're looking at about a minimum of about, I would say, 20 to 25 minutes on that particular dish. Okay? <laughs> we're going to be back with the next segment. And the next segment we're going to do is an Italian dish, once again, with Chef D stuff. It's going to be called Crab La Butta La Bala. I just made that name up. It sounded pretty good. <laughs> so delicious. Yeah, so delicious. Seasonings. She's been thrilling audiences all around the world. Now you're going to be thrilled at the latest album from singer-songwriter Sandy Castell. Get your copy now of Indiana Rain. Indiana Rain. We're back with Chef Michael and Chef D, and they are preparing something marvelous. It smells so good. Oh yeah, well like I said, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a special crab dish. You can go to Smith's, it's called Snow Crab. It's $7.95 a pound. Now what I've done here, as you can see, I've melted some butter and fresh garlic and a little bit of Italian olive oil. And as you can see, this is sauteing. Now what I need you to do, Chef uh, D, put them crabs in there. <laughs> All right. Just put it right in. Put Take it right time. in there. That's the way to do it. And once again, normally what I would use is salt, pepper, parsley, garlic. But once again, we're here with Chef D because he has this special spice that you can do this exact same thing at home. Now, I usually add a chicken stock to make it a little juicy. But some people don't, could be a vegetarian and yes. eat chicken. So what we're gonna do is we don't, we're gonna take it out of this particular recipe. But as, as you can see, we're gonna use this all-purpose rub because like I say, it has that nice liberty flavor. So we're gonna add this to the crab. Are you gonna rub their legs? <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna rub each other's legs while they're in this nice little bird bath here. And oh, that looks great. And as you can see, I wish you guys could just smell the aroma, yes. how fantastic it is. What did we like to add just a little pinch of? which you can, it's a little what you call the red sea pepper, mm -hmm. yes. which is very good. And the, the ingredient here for me is sherry. This is a cream sherry. And what you do, you add your cream sherry. That was delicious. And if you'd be so kind, Chef D, to put the lid on top of that. And let it do what it do. And let it do what it do, like he would say. And this takes about a good 10 minutes and then shut it off. And that dish is done. And when we come back, we're going to show you the finished product on the delicious fish that we did and also the delicious crab. And we, all, we also have some vegetables for you too. Oh, right, yeah. Chef Mike? That's what I'm talking about. Vegetables, crabs, fish. Mm. Oh my gosh, I can't mm. wait. I'm so hungry. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. And as you can see, everybody, mm. look, look at, at that this. crab. And the juice is phenomenal. Wait until you taste that. And it is so delicious and so nutritious. And Sandy's going to do the dishes. Yeah! <laughs> Fat chance. Here we are again with another great meal with Chef Michael and neighbors together for a great meal. Thank you, Chef D, for bringing your spices. Thank you, Liz Kugel, for being here, part of this family. And thank you to the couple here. Yes, to your dad, Irma. Ben and ben Irma. Irma. Heron. Yes. <laughs> and then, of course, as always, to Chef Michael. Chef Michael. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, man. Way to go. You, you see, Drago, uh, here's up before anybody else. That's right. <laughs> and here's to our meal, and here's to you. So, have a great day. Now hey, we're going to eat. Chef Michael. Yeah. Thank you for joining Sandy Castell and Friends. See you next time.